All right, so my topic for the unsupervised clustering methods was spectral clustering. And this in and of itself isn't an entirely new algorithm alone, but it uses a lot of other algorithms and other, you know, like mathematical specific algorithms to simplify data and make it really easy for a uh, very simple algorithm like k-means to figure out, you know, clusters and data relatively easily. So the start to any good spectral clustering algorithm is finding using the process called k nearest neighbor which is essentially just taking at any point you know in any dimensional graph and finding the point that's close to it so in this case as I've already drawn lines here we see that the closest neighbor to one is two closest neighbor to two is three the closest neighbor to three is also two but since the closest neighbor to four is three we can see this line here and see it's connected and I said that the closest neighbor for five is two right there so we see that 1 and 5, they don't get aligned together, 1 and th 5 and 3, 5 and 4, they don't get aligned because none of them are the closest to each other. All right, so we take these distances and we put them into a matrix, and of course the diagonal is 0, because that's just the distance between 1 to 1, 2 to 2, it's always going to be 0. And so if we get a pencil out right here, we could just say, like, it would just calculate the distance between like 1 and 2, all right, we say 1 and 2, just say it's like, the distance is like 1.5. And it should be also the same over here because, you know, that's just also the distance between 1 and 2. And then for, say, you wanted to find the distance between, like, 1 and 5. Well, 1 and 5, they don't have a line. They're not the nearest neighbor, so we would just put another 0 in there. And, yeah, so that's how it would go. You just continue that out. Like, 1 to 3 wouldn't work because they're not the nearest neighbors. And essentially what you're doing here is you're just getting a vector, right? You're just finding one point and another there. So now you have a magnitude and a direction. And the point of doing that, right, is that in the next step, what we would do is we would need to find the eigenvectors. And for a little gif of what an eigenvector looks like, if it'll move itself here in a second. Um, an eigenvector is just something where it is kind of, it's a linear algebra translation where the vector's direction does not get changed. As you can see, like these blue arrows and everything, all the, the directions are still the same, but we stretch the magnitude. Now the magnitude, instead of one, now it's two. So that's what an eigenvector is. It's the vector that, when translated on by a certain amount, stays the same. Now, and then, once we have the eigenvectors, we also will find we will send these eigenvectors through a Laplacian, which will give us sort of a gradient of what these vectors are, their direction in which they're going. Not just that, you know, the director, not that it's just staying the same, but the actual direction in which these vectors are going. So using these two bits of data, what we are doing is finding out how much we can stretch data by how much we can like move these points closer or further away from each other so that all the information stays accurate right so we're just pretty much trying to distinctify this group this little cluster right here from like another potential cluster that's over here like if they're too close together and this is supposed to be a cluster and like this is supposed to be a cluster what spectral the process that I just described is called spectral embedding what spectral embedding does is tries to find a way to move these further away from each other so that simpler learning algorithms can distinctify which clusters belong to which one. And so yeah, once you find the eigenvalues and or eigenvectors and you use the Laplacian to find where the gradient is and where you're going to actually move the points away from each other, then, you know, this would turn into very tight points like if this was like a graph over here. It would turn into very tight point like tight groups that are very far away from each other so that a k-means algorithm just you know come in and oh easily find that that's a cluster that's a cluster and that's a cluster and so that is spectral clustering in a nutshell thank you very much